remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again, and my goodness, what a week this has been for the White House. What a week this has been for the Obama administration. I mean, it seemed like every day this week, every time you turned around, there is another scandal that popped up. I guess it was, you know, rope all of them together and call them Obamagate, for lack of a better term. But my goodness, every time you turned around, some new scandal popped out. There is this IRS scandal where they, they were targeting Tea Party groups and trying to keep them from getting tax-exempt status and interfere with them organizing. You had uh, all the Benghazi stuff going on where the administration altered documents to make it appear as though Islamic terrorism wasn't the root cause, which it was the root cause. You have all the DOJ, uh, the DOJ investigations going on right now. You have the, the, the White House tapping the phone lines of the Associated Press. Hey, wait, Associated Press... I thought y'all were on Obama's side. I guess with friends like that, who needs enemies, huh? I mean, the scandal level has been so off the charts here that even the Kardashian sisters are over in the West Coast looking towards Washington and saying, hey, y'all are a little out of control over there. Wow. When I look back at this week, there's one thought that's been going through my head time and again. Some of you may remember this. There used to be a, an old football coach named Denny Green. He used to be the head football coach of the Arizona Cardinals. And he, his one claim to fame is that after a close loss one time, think of the Chicago Bears, Denny Green comes out to the podium for his press conference, and he's steaming mad, and he's upset, and he leans down into the microphone, and he looks at the press, and he just exclaims, They are who we thought they were! Well, that phrase has just been rebounding around my head all week. They are who we thought they were. This White House, given what we've seen and what's been proven over the last week, they are everything that we on the right have told the rest of America that they are from day one. Everything we said about them is coming to be proven, basically. The chickens are coming home to roost, as Reverend Wright might say. And I will admit to you that in the face of all this, it would be real tempting to come out here and gloat a little bit. It would be real tempting to say, I told you so. But right now, for today, I don't know that that's the most important thing we could do. Uh, and, and I know that the most obvious thing to do would be really to castigate Barack Obama and to point out to you what a horrible human being he is and how dangerous for America he is. And, you know, there will be plenty of time to do that going forward. As more of this stuff comes out, as these scandals get worse and worse, and as, as the focus starts to draw more on uh, how and when we're going to be able to, to have Barack Obama escorted out of the White House in handcuffs and shackles, and, you know, I just happen to have a pair of Obama cups here. You know, they'll fit you fine, Mr. President. I, I can't wait to see Barack Obama model these babies. But even at that, I think all of that needs to be set to the side right now. Even as much of a focus as there is on Barack Obama and what he's done. Um, even at that, I think there is one lesson out of this that is even bigger than simply Barack Obama, believe it or not. We've no doubt heard by now of what Obama and his administration did to use the IRS to go after Tea Party groups, to obstruct them, to try and find out everything they could about them, gather intelligence, gather information on them as they applied for these tax exempt statuses. But what if I told you that this is not the first time that a sitting American president has targeted conservative groups in such a way, using the IRS? What if I told you that one of the most loved and respected presidents of all time, John F. Kennedy, did something very similar in the early 60s. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, President Kennedy at one point asked the director of the Internal Revenue Service to gather intelligence on organizations receiving tax exemptions. And this is just as Kennedy was going on a push through the West, making a bunch of speeches, talking about the so-called dangers of right-wing extremism. Wow, that's almost exactly what Barack Obama did now, now isn't it? And Kennedy didn't stop there. Once the intelligence was gathered, he, uh, he had his brother, the Attorney General Bobby Kennedy, he ordered him uh, to get in touch with the IRS commissioner, a guy named Mortimer Kaplan back then. Mortimer Kaplan. One of the great names in history. You know, more people need to name their kids Mortimer. I'm going off on a tangent. 
But anyhow, Bobby Kennedy gets in touch with Mortimer Kaplan of the IRS and orders him to begin extensive audits of these right-wing groups. Hmm. The more things change, the more they stay the same, huh? And what if I told you that the Kennedy example there, even that was not an isolated incident? You go back to the 1930s, Franklin Roosevelt, when he was in the midst of his New Deal push, there was a newspaper out in Philadelphia called the Philadelphia Inquirer. It was run by a guy named Mo Annenberg. And the Inquirer became a pretty, uh, pretty popular newspaper out in Philadelphia, and it was very critical of FDR and his New Deal politics. It was so critical that FDR thought, well, we can't let this go on. And FDR got with the IRS, and he had them put over a dozen agents to work investigating Mo Annenberg. The end result ended up being an $8 million fine and three years in prison and the end of the Philadelphia Inquirer. I guess that's one way to deal with the press. Now, some of you liberals out there hearing me talk about these examples of John F. Kennedy and FDR, and you're jumping up and down, and you're screaming, and you're screaming at your computer, and you're saying, what about Richard Nixon? Richard Nixon used the IRS to go after his enemies. Richard Nixon did everything that FDR and JFK and all these other guys did. And I would tell you, you're absolutely right. Yeah, Richard Nixon did the same thing. And that leads me to this lesson that I think we all need to learn from this. The moral of this week, beyond just Barack Obama, who will be dealt with over the next few weeks, the moral that we all should take from this is that whenever you have a large government, whenever you enable a government to have a mechanism within it that has the strength, that has the power to potentially be used in a, in a way that people can go after their enemies or reward their friends, it will always end up being used for that purpose. And it's not just Democrats that will do it, although they're probably quicker to do it than others. Once that, once that possibility is there, you can count on it being used that way. It's human nature. Human beings, regardless of what political affiliation we are, regardless of how moral and pious we think we are, and some are more than others, but we all have the temptation to use whatever means are at our hand to do in our enemies. We all have the temptation to silence those who would interfere with our work. Now, what I'm saying to you is that this is the reason those of us on the right are so focused and so hell-bent on limited government. You hear that phrase a lot, but I don't know that a lot of people truly understand what it means or that they truly think it through. We are in favor of a government that is so limited, that has such limited amounts of power, that has such strict and defined capabilities and responsibilities, that even if somebody wanted to use it to nefarious ends, even if somebody wanted to use it to silence their enemies, which let's face it, we all would have that temptation, that even if any of us wanted to do it, we couldn't. It wouldn't be powerful enough to do so. That's what I'm getting at. You know, I would love to come out here and tell you that if I were president, I would never use the IRS or any of the other government tools at my disposal to silence my enemies. I would never use the IRS to, say, go after the liberal news media or network news or CNN or MSNBC or Rachel Maddow or any number of people. I'd love to tell you that. But honestly, I can't say that. You know, there's a large part of me that would think, hey, after all the damage these people have done over the last hundred so years, it would be a case of doing the wrong thing to the right people. And that's the point. If you have a government who is powerful enough to use their muscle to go after your enemies, then it's only a matter of time before somebody else gets in charge of that government and uses it and turns it around to go after you. Associated Press is finding that out this week. That's why limited government is so important. That's why you see that's why you see the Tea Party right now having such fights even within the Republican Party when it comes to certain issues. Because we want limited and small government above all else. Some of the old school Republicans don't feel the same way. But there's one more thing I want to focus on today. And that's a message towards some of you younger voters out there. Some of you that kind of got swept away in the Barack Obama hype over the last four or eight years. You know, Certainly, I can be critical of you for, for your decisions. Maybe some of you are young, idealistic liberals who just don't know any better. Maybe others of you really aren't idealistic liberals. You're just, 
you know, your independents who liked what the guy had to say. Well, I think this should teach you a lesson. And I'm not saying that in a, in a downgrading sort of way. I think this is a lesson that we all have to learn in our political lives at some point. The lesson to learn is that when somebody tells you they're different, when somebody tells you they're not like all the rest of the politicians, when somebody tells you they're going to be the one who's going to be transparent, they're going to be the one out of all of them that cares about you, it's hogwash. No politician of either party is truly going to care about you, nor should they. We've gotten to a point where we don't need to expect our politicians to care for us or to empathize with us or to make our lives better. That's not what government's about. What we need politicians to do, those who are elected, is to obey the Constitution, remove whatever impediments are there for us to be able to make success of our lives on our own and without their help. People say to me that a politician doesn't care about the, the poor. I say, who cares? It's not a politician's job to care about the poor or anybody else. But a lot of you got roped into that, well, Barack Obama cares about me. Barack Obama speaks for me kind of rhetoric. And hey, he was very charming with it. I'll give you that. But I hope you take the lesson from this that no politician of any party truly cares about you, nor should you expect them to. Painful lesson, I know, but I know a lot of you younger liberals, not, not the old liberals who've been in the fight for 30 or 40 years. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about those of you in your 20s and 30s. I've heard a lot of you, and I've seen postings on Facebook and Twitter, and I've read different things. A lot of you are disappointed in, in Obama, the guy you supported this week. You have good reason to be. But remember that old phrase, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. This is a lesson for you to learn. That no politician or no human being is above the temptation to misuse a big government to silence their enemies or act inappropriately. That is why big government, regardless of who is in charge of it, is always a danger. That is why government is like fire. It's like playing with fire. Fire, when used in very specific and directed ways, can be beneficial. But when it escapes that very concise area, it's dangerous. Government is the same way. We cannot put together a large government and then hope we can find honorable men and women to run it properly. Human beings just aren't built that way. I don't care what their party affiliation is. Some sobering lessons, some things to think about, and then now we go back to the action at hand and the work at hand of making sure Barack Obama gets walked out of the White House in a pair of these. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.